To wake to news the other day on my X feed, my Twitter feed, of 40 babies beheaded by Hamas animals at a kibbutz in southern Israel was beyond shocking. It deepens my sense of shame as an Australian that supporters of this were allowed to chant, gas the Jews, F the Jews, on the steps of the Opera House on Monday night. 40 babies beheaded, Allah Akbar. That Channel 9 would run a puff piece with the pro-terrorism organiser of the Town Hall and Opera House rallies, Asala Sayera, was just insane. We are also feeling proud, proud of the resilience and the resistance of the Palestinian people. Why did you think it was important to have a march in Sydney last night? It's important to be on the streets of Sydney last night and probably any other day because we look for every opportunity to vocalise our stance against the Israeli occupation. Now, while Asala is feeling proud of supporting Nazi-like behaviour, a Victorian MP, Moira Deeming, remains unjustly suspended from the Parliamentary Liberal Party after being falsely accused of being a Nazi sympathiser. Yet the real Nazis, those who uh, stand up on the steps of the Sydney Opera House and call for an actual Holocaust in 2023 by killing the Jews from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, get a free run on mainstream media. What was Channel 9 thinking? What has become of Australia? The New South Wales Labor government's hapless police minister, Yasmin Cately, who should resign, and uh, who also laughably has in her title of police minister and minister for counter-terrorism, what a joke, she allowed the terror supporters to march to the Opera House, burn the Israeli flag, and let off flares and chant murderous slogans while telling Jews to stay at home because the streets of Sydney were not safe for them. Will hate speech laws be invoked against those who, who rallied on Monday night? I doubt it. Yet people like me are being dragged through years of litigation under the same hate speech laws for saying LGBTIQA plus drag queens are dangerous role models for children, which they are. Yet those calling for death and genocide against Jews, they won't be up on hate speech charges. They won't be dragged through tribunals for the next three years. In the world of modern woke, justice and truth are dangerously inverted. At his media conference on Tuesday, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, was more worried about Islamophobia breaking out than Australian Muslims calling for a 21st century Holocaust. The United Nations and the Jewish conspiracy uh, that has have uh, links to and promote uh, anti-Semitism. I'm concerned about the rise of anti-Semitism. I'm concerned as well about uh, Islamophobia, uh, which has impacted in this country as well. Now, notice how Albanese's reference to anti-Semitism had nothing to do with the anti-Semitism on the steps of the Opera House. He was deflecting in classic poly speak to make a point that, in his view, the real problem was anti-Semitism from the right-wing conspiracy theorists, not the Muslim terror supporters at the Opera House. Well, PM, I don't know about you, but I'm scared of Muslim fanatics with police protection standing on the steps of the Opera House calling for the murder of Jews. And as the Australian Jewish Association said this week, if anyone thinks they will stop at going after Jews and not go after the rest of us, they are kidding themselves. Our Jewish population is also scared, having been told by the police to stay off the streets for their own safety. Some of the Jewish community even told their children not to wear their school uniforms for fear of reprisals. Are they irrational Islamophobes, Mr Prime Minister? Now, the former Prime Minister, John Howard, leadership, rightly tells Labor to stop pussyfooting around terrorism. John Howard said this, to have people chanting those things, gas the Jews, F the Jews, it is a catastrophic dissent from civility that I never thought I'd see, end quote. Me too, Mr Howard. 
Yet the Australian National Council of Imams remains silent. When I last checked their website yesterday, there was still not a peep of condemnation of Hamas terrorism. Their last media release on October 8 talks about Israeli occupation. What a nonsense. The Palestinians have been offered land for peace a million times during my lifetime, and each time they reject it because their true aim is killing Jews. Israel must protect its citizens in circumstances like this and has every right to do so. The old saying has never been truer. That is, if the Palestinians laid down their guns, there would be peace. But if the Israelis laid down theirs, there would be no Israel. Asala Sayera on Channel 9 revealed what too many Australian Muslims and their leaders think of Hamas. The police have said they will review security footage from last night. They've warned that charges could be laid, particularly if there were people supporting Hamas because it's declared a terrorism organisation in Australia. Are you worried you could see people charged from last night? You know, I'm not really surprised with this, you know, um, possible investigation or investigation that will be taken by the police because once again, Hamas is framed as a terrorist organisation. Hamas is framed as a terrorist organisation? I think they frame themselves. Poor Hamas, victims of a vast right-wing conspiracy. Ignore the rapes, the baby killing, the mutilation of bodies while indiscriminately murdering and kidnapping. Any Western Sydney Muslim leader worth their salt would immediately repudiate Sayara's characterisation of Hamas and reassure, and reassure the rest of us Australians that Islam rejects terrorism and that it is a religion of peace. Or is it? Not according to another Western Sydney Muslim leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Dadaun, who recently prayed at an event attended by Albanese. He's no fringe ratbag. Well, not entirely, he's a rat bag. He worked as the director of the public relations at the Australian National Imams Council for three years. On Sunday night, while the bodies were still warm, he was on the streets of Lakemba proclaiming in front of hundreds of local Muslims his happiness at the slaughter of young people at a music festival. I'm smiling and I'm happy. I'm elated. It's a day of courage. absolutely despicable. Now, I want to believe that the majority of Muslims, Australians, are here because they love our nation, are part of it, and are truly people of peace. But when the former PR officer of their Imams Council supports terrorism and the council itself remains silent, a foreboding sets in. Many Australians must now be wondering if we've made a mistake in being so welcoming. To New South Wales Premier Chris Minns' credit, he has apologised to the Jewish community for Monday night's debacle. But Australia's night of shame must not be allowed to stand. Please, Mr Albanese and Mr Minns, don't let the Australian Nazi Hamas supporters win. Relight the Opera House in the colours of the Jewish state's flag, but this time do it for a month. Lead a vigil there. We will come. Civil society will support you.